worker in this country for 30 years, worked his way up. And at this moment, at this time that we're all living in right now, in this revolutionary time, he decided to answer the call of his brothers and sisters in the labor movement and stand up and be a leader of the biggest labor organization in this country. I really want to say that we're so very inspired by him and the life that he's and the people that are supporting him, all our brothers and sisters of the labor movement and the vision that they're bringing in to this movement right now to confront neoliberalism in this country, to stand in solidarity with other social movements of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, young people, grandies, grandpas, join me in welcoming the new president of the Canadian Labor Congress, Hassan Youssef. Sisters and brothers, friends and colleagues, I can't tell you how honored I am to be with you here today. On behalf of our 3.3 million members across this country, I can say without any hesitation the fact that you have chose to come to Ottawa to reclaim this place as a place for working people. Give me hope. We will change this country, my friends. We will change this country. land recognize fundamentally how much this country has been changing under our Prime Minister Stephen Harper. It doesn't take us long to recognize if this government get another mandate what this country would look like. So sisters and brothers, I want to say to all of you that are here this weekend in Ottawa, to spend time in workshops, to talk with each other, to deliberate on strategy and to figure out how we are going to work together, I can't tell you the importance of that. See, the important thing about this land, whether you live here in Ontario or you live in the far reaches of the north or in the west, as Canadians we have one fundamental thing we share. We believe in a country where social justice is paramount in its agenda every single day. Where equality for all of its citizens is fundamental to what defines this land. And more importantly, the fact that Canadians who go to work day in and day out must be able to live off the fruits of their labor and not to live in poverty. So sisters and brothers, we have watched our Prime Minister and government fundamental reordering this country in a way that we didn't think we would recognize. And I know the challenge is enormous, but I can say without any hesitation, our 3.3 million members and their family right across this country are prepared to fight to regain control of this land to ensure working people values at the center of our national parliament. As I speak to you today, sisters and brothers, our parents, our four parents, seniors in this country, 1.6 million of them are today living in poverty. 12 million Canadians who work every single day in this land have no other pension than the Canada pension right now. And more importantly, what we need to know, there is a commitment from our finance ministers across this country, working with the Canadian Labour Congress, that said we need to double the benefits of our CPP to ensure Every single Canadian who work in this land will retire with dignity and the only obstruction is our Prime Minister. <laughs> Sisters and brothers and friends, it is critical for all of us to know that if you spend a lifetime working in this land, you should never have to live in poverty. Never have to live in poverty. Fundamentally, it's a campaign that we must win to ensure the next generations in this country have a better future and a better retirement. We can do this. We must fight for this. As I speak to you today, sisters and brothers, one in five children can't find decent childcare in this country. It's a shame. Yet, we continue to give the oil companies that are making so much profit one billion dollars a year in tax subsidies. Where is our priority? Where is our priority in this country? Fundamentally, sisters and brothers, 
What we need is what our sisters and brothers in Quebec have had, a national child care system for every working family in this country. Sisters and brothers and friends, there's much hard work ahead and much unity that needs to be focused on this weekend. Because what we're doing here in a small way, we need to repeat in communities across this land. I can tell you, the solidarity has been forged with the Quebec colleagues coming across the bridge. And those of us from outside of Quebec are coming together. Because I think our fundamental values are the same in this country. If we can bring this together, anything is possible in this land. And I want to, of course, said what's been said by many speakers before. You know, I read like many of you and have watched your national television. I can't tell you how much by heart we... How many more Tina Fontaine in this country must we have? How many more young Aboriginal women must disappear and die until we get a national inquiry by our national government? Our First Nation brothers and sisters who was here before us have a right have a right to expect our national government to treat them with respect and to ensure that their resources that are harnessed to enrich the rest of us must enrich themselves first in this land. How is it every single day we can have portable drinking water that we take for granted, yet in almost 200 communities across this country, First Nation can't have portable drinking waters. The first solidarity is going to mean something, sisters and brothers. We have to send a clear message to our national government. It is a disgrace, your contempt for First Nation and Aboriginal people in this country, and we will stand with them until they get justice. I want to conclude my remarks, sisters and brothers, because I know the enormous work ahead of us. As your president of the Canadian Labour Congress, I recognize fundamentally we are at a crossroads in this country. We can dock our responsibility or we can stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, and say we can do better. I know the greatness of this land that I came to as a young man. I understand the fundamental values of this country. It's about fairness, it's about justice, it's about equality. And we will not allow our Prime Minister to perverse these fundamental values. Fundamentally, sisters and brothers, the solidarity we will forge over the next number of days with our conversation will unite us. 2000, the Prime Minister have a destiny with, is at the ballot box. We will do everything to ensure when we get the moment to cast our ballot, we will have a progressive government running our country and taking back the things that matter to Canadians. Social justice, equality and fairness for all. There have been many governments who have come here before and been contemptuous of working people and their values. This government understand one thing. Once we make up our mind and forge our solidarity together, we can do great things. We will do great things in 2015 by the power we build and the solidarity forge. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend in our conversation and our conferences. All the best.